Welcome to this section for contactless web cleaning for roll-to-roll -roll and sheet-to-sheet -sheet processing. My name is Peter Overshi. I'm a senior mechanical engineer at IBIS Precision Engineering, which is based in Eindhoven in the Netherlands. Why do we need contactless cleaning? In roll-to-roll -roll and sheet-to-sheet -sheet processes, particles are the major cause of divide defects. Contamination cannot always be prevented. So therefore, it is necessary to clean uh, particles in the production process. The conventional method of cleaning is contact cleaning, for example, by means of sticky rollers. However, this has certain risks. Particles can be imprinted in the foil or the sheet that you are cleaning, or sensitive layers that are on the sheet can be damaged. Therefore, we designed a new cleaning principle, which is narrow gap cleaning. Let me explain you the targets that we have set for this research project. First of all, we, the goal of the research was to develop a cleaning tool for removal of particles from moving fall using the narrow gap principle. The targets that we have set is to be equal or better than current contact cleaning methods and to be better than other non-contact cleaning methods. To put this in numbers, for metal particles, this means that we want to achieve a cleaning efficiency of larger than 90%. And for other particles, between 1 and 40 micrometers, we'd like to achieve a cleaning efficiency of better than 50%. And for all other particles larger than 40 micrometers, a cleaning efficiency of larger than 90%. Let me explain you how the narrow gap cleaner principle works. The narrow gap cleaner is built up of a sandwich structure of porous media air tables. One porous media air table is placed on top, the other is on the bottom, and the substrate, the foil or the sheet, is being guided in between the two. The gap between the substrate and each of the porous media air tables is as small as 80 to 250 micrometers. The porous media air tables combine two aspects sheet or web handling and sheet or web cleaning. In the picture below, you see the structure of sheet or web handling. An airflow is guided through the porous media, which creates a stiff layer of air above the substrate. The grooves in the air table are used to e extract vacuum or to insert an airflow this means that you can create a stream of air over the substrate and this stream of air is used to clean the substrate. Using this method, particles are removed from the substrate and brought out of the area uh, where they can pollute uh, other media. So they are pumped out and collected in the area near the pump. What are the advantages of narrow gap cleaning? The concept, concept is designed to keep the airflow in a contained environment. So the air outside of the narrow gap cleaner will not be influenced by the uh, airflow inside the narrow gap cleaner. The air consumption is low because a high speed air can be created because the gap is so small. Furthermore, the porous media air bearings themselves have a very low air consumption by nature. As the airspeed is so high, we can penetrate the boundary layer that exists on top of the surface of the substrate. How do we set this small gap in the narrow gap cleaner? We have designed this setup with which you can use micrometer screws to exactly adjust the gap in between the two porous media air tables. To start with, we use gauge blocks to get a defined initial gap height. Dependent on the foil thickness, you need to adjust the gap to the desired height, which, ca which can be done by using the micrometer screws. We have designed two setups for narrow gap cleaning. And one setup for sheet-to-sheet -sheet cleaning and one setup for roll-to-roll -roll cleaning. First, I'll start to talk about the setup for sheet-to-sheet -sheet cleaning. With this setup, we have designed 
an offline camera setup which was developed to measure particles as small as 1.5 micrometers. The way we determine the cleaning efficiency of our narrow gap cleaner is as follows. First, we get a substrate, a glass plate in this example, with particles deposited on it. This can be dust particles which have been collected by exposing the glass plate to open air or it can be uh, aluminum particles or steel particles or other particles. Before cleaning, we inspect the glass plate by placing it on the camera system. Next, the plate is cleaned and after cleaning, we reposition it on the camera system on the exact same location. We do this so we can get a one-to-one -one comparison of each location before and after cleaning. Some details about the camera setup. The camera uses bright light illumination like most cameras do and has a, an optical re resolution of 1.5 micrometers. This is achieved by the microscope object which is mounted to the camera. The camera resolution is 0.3 by 0.3 micrometers so that's better than the optical resolution so the camera is not a limiting factor. The field of view is 0.6 by 0.6 millimeters, which is fairly small due to the very high optical resolution that we have achieved. The repeatability of placing the sheets before and after cleaning is 10 micrometers, which is really good. And a step repeatability of the setup that we have developed is also only 10 mi micrometers. This way we can very accurately replace the glass plate after cleaning on the exact same location as we had placed it before cleaning and we can compare the two locations. With this setup we are able to detect very small particles. The image shows a zoomed in section of the image that comes from the camera and you can see particles as small as 10 micrometers or five, 4 micrometers are detected. Even particles of 1 micrometer can be found, but these are, do not have enough contrast to be detected by any imaging software. The particles that we have used are reference particles which have defined a size of 10, 4 and 1 micrometers, which you can see in the picture. After grabbing the images with the camera, the images need to be converted in imaging software to be able to count the particles. Many methods exist for converting images and we have tested and verified many of these algorithms to be able to achieve the highest quality of counting particles with the highest reliability. A factor in counting particles in images is noise in the image. For example, if the lighting is uneven or if particles are overlapping. Im images with too much noise must be rejected from the process. We have designed an algorithm that automatically can reject two noisy images. This removes the factor of personal judgment whether an image is too noisy or not, and it increases the repeatability of the process. Moreover, it increases the speed, because manually checking 70 images which are taken before and 70 images which are taken after cleaning takes a lot of time. So this automated algorithm drastically improved the speed of testing so we could easily take 70 or multiple times 70 images to do data analysis on. This way we have achieved a very thorough way of comparing one image before cleaning to one image after cleaning with very high quality. This slide shows two examples of before cleaning and after cleaning in the Gray image above, you see the before cleaning situation and the image next to it shows the digital image which has been created by the computer. The computer counts all the particles and determines the size of each particle. Now in the picture below, you see that most of the particles have been removed, only some small particles remain and in the computer image which is next to it, you can actually match those particles to the particles that were there in the image before. This slide shows another example and you see that it is mainly the very small particles that remain on the glass plate and all big particles have been removed. 
Let's talk about the set of tests that we have performed using the sheet-to-sheet -sheet cleaning tool. We have used standard sized 6 by 6 inch glass plates and also we have used PET plates of the same size. These plates were artificially contaminated with environmental dust, with steel, aluminum particles and also with sprayed polystyrene, silicon dioxide, molybdenum particles which had a controlled particle size of 1, 4 or 10 micrometers. We had tried different throughput speeds from 1 to 100 millimeters per second and we have also varied the gap height to see if there was any influence from 85 micrometers to 230 micrometers. Let me show you the major results of this research with sheet to sheet cleaning. The cleaning efficiency of glass plates. To be able to interpret these results you should be aware that each graph represents 70 locations before and 70 locations after which have been compared to each other and which have been checked for noisy images. Moreover, for each type of experiment that we did, like aluminum on glass plates, aluminum on PET plates, steel on glass plates, we have done multiple runs to make sure that we got consistent results. This slide shows the major results for the set of experiments that I just mentioned. If we look at the graphs, you can see three graphs, dust particles on the left, aluminum particles in the middle and steel particles on the right. The top graphs show the actual amounts of particles that were counted. Green is before the cleaning and red, which is much smaller, is after cleaning. The graph below shows the cleaning efficiency. So if you look at dust particles, we can see that, for example, particles of 10 micrometers were cleaned with a cleaning efficiency of 75%. So 75% of the particles that were on the glass plate before were actually removed. For particles larger than 15 micrometers, the cleaning efficiency was even higher, 95%. Aluminum particles for all sizes were cleaned very well. The cleaning efficiency of particles as small as 2 micrometers was already 85% and particles larger than 6 micrometers were cleaned with an efficiency of 97%. Steel particles did not clean that well, not as good as aluminum particles, but still, already for particles of 10 micrometers, 50% of the steel particles was cleaned, and particles larger than 60 micrometers still were cleaned with 95% cleaning efficiency. For the cleaning on glass plates, a general trend was visible that the cleaning efficiency increases with the particle size. Small particles are not cleaned as well as the larger particles. When cleaning a second time, the cleaning efficiency did not significantly improve. As the thickness of the foil or the glass plate that you are using may vary from glass plate to glass plate, we have tested the dependency of the height of the gap on the cleaning efficiency. We measured several gaps ranging from 230 micrometers to as low as 85 micrometers. We did that using several glass plates with dust and compared to them by setting the gap one step higher for every glass plate that we measured. The measurements showed to be very repeatable. Some variation occurred for the very small particles but that could also be in the imaging software. We have seen that variation of the gap height has no significant influence on the cleaning efficiency within the range that we have tested. To check whether the sheet-to-sheet -sheet cleaner cleans equally well over its whole width, we have done experiments by measuring particles both in, me in cleaning direction and lateral to the cleaning direction. The graph shows the results of these two me measurements. We can see that the blue line, which represents the cleaning perpendicular to the cleaning direction shows a little bit lower cleaning efficiency for all particle sizes and is likely due to the pressure drop that you find at the sides of the sheet to sheet cleaner. In this the gap at the sides of the sheet to sheet cleaner due to the thickness of the glass plate the air can escape which results in a pressure drop. Other relevance factors that we have tested are the throughput velocity variations. If you vary the throughput between 1 and 100 millimeters per second, 
you've got no significant influence on the cleaning efficiency. We have also tested PET plates and the results of the cleaning the PET plates are consistent with cleaning the glass plates. Furthermore, we have deliberately charged the PET plates electrostatically and we noticed that this did not significantly influence the cleaning efficiency. So let's compare the results that we have obtained to the targets that we have set. The particle removal efficiency, the cleaning efficiency on glass plates was in general very good for particles larger than 10 micrometers. Aluminum particles, particle removal efficiency of 79%, while our target was 90%. Environmental dust, we achieved 74%, our target was set to 50%. And for steel particles, we achieved 61%. Here the target was somewhat higher, 90%. For particles larger than 40 micrometers, all particles, we achieved a particle removal efficiency of larger than 95%. The target was set to 90%. Results on PET plates, on PET plates, are very similar to the results of the glass plates. Now let's have a look at the second setup that we have created for roll to roll cleaning. In the picture on the left, you see the narrow gap cleaning setup. On the left and on the right, you see the rolls for winding and unwinding foil. And in the middle, you see the narrow gap cleaner. The picture on the right shows the camera that we have used in this case, as we could not use the same camera because that was an on offline camera setup. And while we need, in this case, an online camera possibility. What are the goals that we have set for narrow gap cleaning integration on the roll to roll setup? First, we'd like to achieve results that are comparable on the inline setup with the offline setup. As a measurement tool, we'd like to use the part sense, which is equipped for inline measurement if it's stationary. We'd like to extend the foil width to 300 millimeters. We're going to use PET, black PET, which is suitable for usage with the part sense measurement tool. For particles that we're going to test, we have selected environmental dust and aluminum. Gap will be set in between 50 micrometers and 150 micrometers. The particle counter that we have used, the part sense, is a handheld measurement head based on glancing light technology. So the light comes from the sides and is reflected by the particles that are on the foil. The measurement head is manually positioned. This means that we cannot do repeatable measurements before and after cleaning. We cannot compare the before and after measurements one by one, but only by statistics. For, therefore, for each measurement, we take 30 samples before cleaning and after cleaning and do the statistics on the 30 samples. The resolution of the part sense is somewhat higher than the resolution. Looking at the micrometers, you come to a resolution of one pixel is 8.5 micrometers by 8.5 micrometers. You need at least three by three pixels to represent a particle to be able to distinguish it from dust. So the resolution comes to 36 micrometers. The measurements on the roll to roll cleaning are still in progress, but let me show some initial results. The graphs are similar to the graphs I showed before. For dust particles, we can see that for particles of 80 micrometers, 80% 80 of the dust particles is cleaned. And for particles larger than 150 micrometers, even 92% of the dust particles is cleaned. For aluminum particles, we have even better results. Particles of 80% of 80 micrometers, 90% is cleaned. And particles larger than 100 micrometers, even 95% of the particles is cleaned. This slide shows an abstract of the major results. As you can see, we achieve very good results with the cleaning for a sheet to sheet process for dust particles, for aluminum particles. The results for steel particles are somewhat lower, but still very good. And the initial results of the roll-to-roll -roll line show also very promising results. The particles of 80% micrometers, even 80% was cleaned for dust. Particles of 80 micrometers, even 90% was cleaned for aluminum. Smaller particles still need to be worked out because that also depends on the results you get from the imaging software. This brings me to my conclusions. The narrow gap cleaning technology has been effectively assessed as a non-contact cleaning method. 
Very good results have been obtained for cleaning organic as well as inorganic materials. Moreover, we have shown that the cleaning setup is robust to variations, for example, in gap height or feed-through velocity. The cleaning efficiencies depend on the combination of contamination and substrate material. And finally, we have validated measurements of particles and particle sizes, and this showed to be crucial in determining an accurate cleaning efficiency for a specific contamination or substrate combination. I'd like to finalize with thanking you for your attention and acknowledging the European Union's Substance Framework Programme for their funding by the Programme of Clean for Yields.